welcome to Shamba Shape Up Uganda. We are traveling all over Uganda to find hardworking farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to make their farms more productive and adapt to climate change. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice and turn their farms around into a profitable business while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experience on the Shamba Shape Up Uganda! Uganda. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up Uganda. This week we are traveling north of Jinja, the largest city in the Busoga sub-region, visiting the village of Churoba. This is in Kamuli district and we are here to meet Naomi Namugombe. Yes, Naomi and her husband have a couple of enterprises on their 40 acres of land. They have six cows, 25 pigs, three goats, and they grow bananas, maize, sweet potatoes, Oh, they also grow bacaria and some fodder trees. Let's go meet our farmer. I'm a mother of three children, two girls and one boy. I'm married to Mr. Mlia Gonja Steven. And we are happy. The farm started on one acre of land with the three cows. So as these cows were producing, we were selling mostly the milk calves, and then we were expanding from one acre to now 40 acres of land. We want to find out how they do this and what challenges they have on their shamba. So Naomi, yes, what please. challenges do you have on your farm? The challenges are quite uh, many mm -hmm. in different enterprises. Banana, we have a challenge of termites that mm. oh encroach on the mulches. Mm. Okay. Diary, my status is a, st is a challenge. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm always looking for a solution of how to overcome such challenges. Uh, Naomi, you've mentioned quite a number of things that you do on your farm. Yes. Are they commercial or just for home? Most of them are commercial. Ah. Diary, commercial. Okay. Banana, commercial. The, the cows, how much milk do you get from them? I get 28 liters a day per cow. I, ah, what? 28. 28 liters. Yes. That's, That's why it. you see me struggling growing maize on a large scale so that I can feed them and I, I produce the same milk throughout the year. Ah, show me these, uh, these cows. You please. come on, I show you. Okay, the ah, Aggie, you stay there, you stay there. Oh, this okay. one is my business. <laughs> Naomi says she has a challenge of mastitis since her cows are heavy milkers. I am not the expert. We have invited Michael Omol from CKL to tell us what are the causes and how to treat this disease. So Michael, yeah. she has mastitis. Tell us what is mastitis? It's mainly a bacterial disease that affects the udders of the cow. Oh. Once it affects your cows, you'll tend to see your cows are producing even less of milk. It is a hygienic disease. So once you are having a problem of hygiene in the farm, mm. then you tend to suffer from mastitis as much. I don't know how you do your cleaning. I always first remove the cow dung. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I put the disinfectant once a week. Once a week. Oh. Then these other days, mm -hmm. I use water. Mm. You will need to use a disinfectant as regularly as possible. At least every day, you clean and you use a disinfectant in cleaning your floors. I didn't know that one. It is important because the bacteria multiply very fast very, okay. and every day you get to find them. Mm -hmm. And the cows are still in the same environment. So you need to get rid of that in the best way possible. Okay. Yes. I've taken okay. note of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other bit is mastitis gets to also multiply or get to be available mm. at the others if you're having what we call incomplete milking. So you'll mm. find your milkman will get to milk but they don't milk completely. If there's some milk that is left, it gives room for the bacteria to also multiply. Okay. So it is advisable when they are milking, you do what you call complete milking. You milk 
uh, the cow properly, the, all the milk is coming out, then the bacteria are not getting enough room to multiply. Now, there is the other bit. When you're milking teats of the cow, they get to have cracks or we call them abrasions in the other word. They, we always recommend the use of what we call a milking salve. Milking salve is a jelly that you get to apply on the udders. So we highly recommend the use of our CKL milking salve, which has what we call lanolin. It gives the natural resistance mm. on the udder for mm. these kind of bacteria which are causing mastitis. Mm -hmm. Even it's easy when the uh, milkman is doing the milking. There is mm -hmm. the other bit of what we call the cleaning of the udder. I don't know whether you wash the udders before and or after milking. I have some small tins. Mm -hmm. I put warm water. Mm -hmm. Then I just use hands to clean. Water alone mm -hmm. is not able to get rid of the bacteria, okay. all the bacteria. Mm -hmm. So we highly recommend the use of a product called Mastrite. Mastrite is an udder wash. This one, you always use it in washing the udder. When you're cleaning, we recommend the use of a towel. Yes. And when you're using a towel, mm -hmm. it is highly recommended yes. that every cow should have their own towel. Where can I find that chemical you said I put in, mm -hmm. in the water when cleaning the udder? Yes, it's called Mastrite. Yes. You'll find it in any drug shop near you. It's available. And in mm. case you're not getting it, we're always free. Easy. Give us a call and we'll direct you to a place you can <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Yes, there is also a product that is called Cooperside, which you use now to clean the floor. Mm. Because bacteria breed in this environment. That these is floors. the disinfectant. That is the yes. disinfectant. And then I'll give one last tip. Yes. For your cows to prevent mastitis. Mm -hmm. Immediately, you're, you're finishing milking the cows. Mm -hmm. What you do is feed the cows. Have feed on the troughs mm -hmm. so that the cows will go directly to eat. Yes. Why am I saying that? If they go lying down immediately, you're done with milking. Mm -hmm. The pores are still open. open. Oh. Then it, they are Yay. exposed highly to bacteria. I've taken note of that because. Mm -hmm. For us, after milking, yeah. we always direct them to rest. They have been stressed <laughs> with they're milking. Uh -huh, no, they're not supposed to rest. They're supposed to eat at to least because the teeth paws are open at that very moment. You mean we, we are supposed to keep them in a standing position? In a standing position. Mm. Great. Yes. Be on the lookout for these symptoms. Inflammation of the udder, unusual low milk production, and sometimes milk can have blood in it. Good hygiene is important, so before you milk your cow, clean the udder very well. Mix one tablespoon of mustrite udder wash with 4.5 liters of warm water. Use separate cloths for each cow. Apply milking salve. This helps the udder to soften and keeps bacteria away. Banana farming is one of the most important staple food crops in the East African region, particularly for Uganda, being the highest consumer. With such a high demand for matoke, farmers need to start with healthy and clean suckers to get profits in the future. So, we have invited Charles to show us how we can do this. Naomi, yes, please. you're a businesswoman when it comes to suckers. Yes. So when do you invest? Uh, I always get these suckers in the month of uh, August, in the year, I always sell once a year. Why? Because the wind, they blow my banana plants down when I reduce on the suckers. Mm. That's why I always harvest in towards the beginning of the second season. Because for it, when it starts, it doesn't come with that wind and rains that I will always get in the first season. Charles? Yes. Uh, is this the rains that actually take away the, the, plant, the plants or is it something else you think that could be the reason why the plants fall off? Ah, there are quite many um, uh, reasons at why our bananas fall. The type of tool we use to uproot a sucker from the main plant matters a lot. Okay? Yes. When we look at our local hoe, the hoe you normally use as our main garden tool, it has a large surface area. Just look at it. It has a long, a large surface area. This is a large surface area. Mm. So in the process of uploading the sucker, you may find accidental. you can even injure the next sucker or the mother, the mother plant. And if the root system is damaged, the dry period will come in before the establishment of other roots which may have supported the plant. Suddenly, stronger winds or heavy rain, or rains come before that plant has to go down. What another alternative can we use apart from the hole? Even a pan can yeah. uproot a sucker. It can. Just a matter of heating where it attaches the main 
Okay. The, the, main, the main plant. Yes. The moment you cut that part, yes. the suckers out. Yeah. So when you remove the sucker, you put back at the soil from mm -hmm. where the, the sucker has been. Okay. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, the pests. Okay, like the nematodes, they damage the root system of the plant. They can attack your plant from anywhere. But also, it depends uh, the source of the planting material. Was it a clean planting material before? Mm -hmm. Okay, because they come with, with the, along with our planting materials. Eh? Mm -hmm. You can pick them from anywhere. But uh, still, through proper management of the garden, you can like, keep on like, reducing the infection of nematodes to our plants. Another one could be uh, the commonly known banana weevil. They normally damage uh, the part which is between the stem and the root. And the root. So in between there. Yeah. So the moment it is damaged, still the bananas will fall down. That is when there is heavy rains and oh, wind. Yes. Naomi, yes, when yes. you're, you're uh, taking out the suckers, do they have a particular length or height or like how long or how tall are they supposed to be in height? I really follow the size. Mm -hmm. What I always follow is the plant population where I'm getting the sucker. Mm. Uh, there are three stages of, of, of suckers. Okay? When you look, this is the mother plant. Okay? Mm. Now this is the, the follower. And now this is the maiden sucker. And this one also is a maiden sucker. Okay? This one and that one, those are the sword suckers. When you look at their leafing, it's different. Mm. Okay? This one and this one, they have a little bigger leaves. When you look at this and this, their leaves are small. So, at the time of planting, we normally were more interested in the sword sucker or the pupa. The pupa. Why? They have, uh, they have higher rate of cell division. So if you remove the maiden ones, that means you will be uh, disorganizing the flowering ability or the flowering cycle of the plant. Mm. There will be a time lag get you. from harvesting the, the first bunch to the second. For example, if you remove this and you, remove, and you leave this, there will be a very big gap from getting the first bunch to the, the second, second one. one. Okay. So you normally follow that sequence. Eh? Yes. The mother identified, okay, she has a, um, a bunch, yes, let, let me leave, leave this, okay. In a, in a situation whereby it does not have a bunch, then you look at their ages. You may not know when the sucker came, came in, but at least by size. By size. Yes, you can listen to say, okay, this one is about, then this one too close, okay, let me remove this and leave this. Mm. Then you are done with this, because at time T, they can flower at the same time. When preparing our sucker, we, we remove even the roots. Mm. When you remove the roots, the entire roots from that sucker, you'll be able to notice two things. One, any damage of banana weevil. Mm. Then when it comes to, to, to nematodes, the moment you see some uh, funny, funny correlation on the, on on the, the sucker, on the sucker. once a, a banana plant is, is removed, those um, roots, they don't regenerate again. They just die. How does it feed when you plant it, if you remove it? It will produce another root, another new root. Mm, okay. Okay, so it's just a waste of time to plant our sucker awesome. with those uh, roots. roots. Provisha? Yes, what's I'm... going on? What are you doing? Uh, it's nothing, don't worry about it. It's a surprise. You know I don't like surprises. Ah, uh, Adi, don't worry about it. You go. It had better be nice. Uh, yes, yes. Bye. We are still shopping up Naomi's farm. We saw how to prevent and treat mastitis. And we also saw how to clean suckers and plant a healthy banana plantation. <coughs> Naomi sells heifers as one of her income generating activities. But to grow her business, she needs good breeds that can produce more milk and be resistant to tick bone diseases. Michael Moll from CKL is here to show us how to improve our breeds. Breeding is simply selecting the right animals for 
the next generation. So it involves three very important aspects. Mm -hmm. There is production, I'm looking at milk, or maybe mm -hmm. I am looking at getting uh, cows which I'm going to put as beef. Yes. Breeding in terms of health, mm -hmm. because you have cows which maybe uh, they get diseases easily, mm -hmm. such as mastitis, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. others have a lot of hoof problems, so you need to improve on their health aspect of the cow. Mm. Yes. Ooh. So there is what we call a bull catalog. So for example, Madame Naomi has a cow mm -hmm. that is very prone to mastitis. mastitis mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So a bull catalog has information in terms of different characteristics. You'll see a cow that has good somatic cell count. You'll get a cow that has good body weight. So when you look at it, it shows you all those characteristics. As CKL, yeah. we have introduced a breed that is called Girolando. This is a tropical breed mm -hmm. that is very resistant to diseases that we get to face as farmers. You've talked of the troubles you have in mastitis. Yes. The Girolando breed can really survive in such kind of environments and is hardy enough to be giving you better production and falls ill less often from even the cheekbone diseases. How do I get access to such a breed? As a company, yes. we usually sell to inseminators yes. and they're the ones who are having it available. Yeah. So you can improve your breeds with the Girolando. You can have a mix and yes, you have a better so production. If I crossbred Girolando with mm -hmm. the Frasian, mm -hmm. I get a better breed? If you're going to do the crossing of a Frasian and a Girolando, yes. then it's a 50-50. So the bull which is now your Girolando, mm. yes. is going to give you the 50% from what the daughter is going to get and the 50% is going to come from the mother. Mm. So that is the first generation because you want a calf every year. Yes. So for you to reach your point of you having a pure breed, then you need to go for the first generation, second generation, you're getting 75 and uh, 25. So then you get an yes, you keep on increasing so that you get the pure breed by the fourth or the fifth generation based on what you started with. Okay. Yes. So what we are saying is breeding, you cannot achieve your end result in just mm -hmm. one insemination. No, it it's has a to process. be. It's a process. It's a long term process. I want to be a model farmer in Uganda and I want to mechanize my farm whereby when it comes to milking my cows, I use a milking machine. Then I also get a cooling plant for my milk, then sell in bulk. Naomi has three children, and the youngest child is four years old. Good nutrition is important for children at such a young age. So, we have invited Lovinsa, an expert, to help her learn about the benefits of orange-fleshed sweet potatoes. Yes, Naomi, yes. I know you grow sweet potatoes, yes. but which type do you grow? I grow local varieties. Ah, yes. And uh, Lovinsa here. I yes. can see you carried sweet potatoes here and then the, the, the veins. What are all these? These are improved orange fresh sweet potatoes. Are they different from our local varieties? Yes, they are different mm. because they have vitamin A in them. They are very rich in vitamin A. Vitamin A is a nutrient which is required for our eyes to see well. It is very, very important because it gives the body immunity to fight against diseases and to resist infections. Vitamin A helps in premature aging. Vitamin A is very good for a healthy skin and good growth, especially in our children. Will pregnant mothers benefit from it? Very much. You see, 30% of younger children and 50% of pregnant and mothers, mothers and lactating mothers yes. are suffering from lack of vitamin A. They badly need these improved sweet potato varieties. How about men? Even men, <laughs> yeah. because vitamin A helps all of us to see well, including yes. men. They also need it. That is great. Yeah. Apart from the vitamin A, how are they different from our local varieties? Mm. They are different in a way that they are early maturing mm -hmm. and they are high yielding. They can yield 20 tons to 30 per hectare. They also 
intolerant to diseases. Are they different like when we are planting? Yeah, they are different. First of all, I'm saying they are orange fresh. You can as well have a look. Uh. They are really orange. It is the carotene mm. which gives it that color and which has vitamin A. Okay. These new varieties, they have many nutritional benefits in them. Mm -hmm. We have carotene which gives uh, vitamin A to our bodies and enables us to see well. That vitamin A helps to have a good healthy skin. Mm. And the vitamin A helps in premature aging. Apart from eating it as boiled potatoes, mm. how can I present it to my family? You can as well uh, use chips out of this. Out of it, you can make juice. You can make chapatis and panis out of it. So you mean I can get flour out of these new varieties? Yes, you can cut, cut, dry and crush, crush into flour. And that's very good yeah. for baking. Then, the duration of these new varieties, is it different from this local one that I always grow? Because they take yeah. six months to harvest. Oh, six months, that's a long period. You will starve. This one <laughs> takes four months. Yeah. And especially this narrow spot one, at three months, a farmer will not sleep hungry. You will at least get a tuber which you can peel and cook. And this nasa pot eight takes eight months in the soil. When I'm harvesting uh, and it oh, is still there. Yes, you continue harvesting, harvesting, harvesting for eight months. When it's okay. Hmm. This one we are seeing. Naomi. So I need to plant these varieties so that I can feed for the security. Yes. The yes. In my area. Yes. yes. I really need this. It is very good. <laughs> I welcome these new varieties in my area because the varieties we have, we only boil and eat. Okay, so uh, Lovinsa, how do we plant these vines? You see, when we are planting, we space one meter from one line to another line, which is three feet. And also one meter from one mound to another mound. So we place one meter we put a peg here, and then another peg here. This marks our line. I've finished planting my potato veins. Mm. How do I manage? so that I can get that good harvest, you told me. You make sure you weed early. Within one month, you do fast weeding. Yes. Then the second month, you'll be adding, adding more soil, yes. so that the tubers are not exposed out for mm. weevils to destroy. Okay. Orange flesh sweet potatoes can be prepared in a couple of ways. They can be steamed or even made into flour for later consumption. The steamed roots can be mixed with wheat flour to make delicious chapati and mandazi too. Huh? Oh, Agnes! Yes, yes, yes. Ah, you've brought the ladies. Please, mm -hmm. come, 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 yeah. come, 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 feel free. So, I have something special that I want to cook for you. Orange fleshed sweet potato chapati. <laughs> Bro, yes. Step aside. Uh, Let me show you uh, one. Uh, you can't cook to save your life. You, you watch. No, you watch and prepare yours and prepare me. Okay. It's okay. We shall. So, madam. Make orange flesh sweet potato chapatis. You will need flour, the steamed potatoes that are grated, some cooking oil, and warm water. Start by pouring the flour in a container and adding the grated orange flesh sweet potatoes and mix together. Add some cooking oil and water if needed. And ta -da! Healthy and delicious chapatis are 
are done! With such a diet rich in vitamin A, you and your family will be healthy and strong. And don't forget the full bellies! Yes, that's what we had for you this week on Shamba Shape Up Uganda. But before we leave, Naume has interesting advice for all farmers out there. That's right. The advice I want to give the farmers, I want them to have passion and making our culture as a business. They should seek knowledge in all areas.